At the time, I was writing a book about the politics of drug prohibition. I started to ask Ehrlichman a series of earnest, wonky questions that he impatiently waved away. You want to know what this is really all about? He asked with the bluntness of a man who, after public disgrace and a stretch in federal prison, had little left to protect. The Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. I must have looked shocked. Ehrlichman just shrugged. Then he looked at his watch, handed me a signed copy of his steamy spy novel, The Company, and led me to the door. Nixon's invention of the war on drugs as a political tool was cynical, but every president since, Democrats and Republican alike, has found it equally useful for one reason or another. Meanwhile, the growing cost of the drug war is now impossible to ignore. Billions of dollars wasted, bloodshed in Latin America and on the streets of our own cities, and millions of lives destroyed by draconian punishment that doesn't end at the prison gate. One of every eight black men has been disenfranchised because of a felony conviction. As long ago as 1949, H.L. Mencken identified in Americans, quote, the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy, end quote. An astute articulation of our weirdly Puritan need to criminalize people's inclination to adjust how they feel. The desire for altered states of consciousness creates a market. And in suppressing that market, we have created a class of genuine bad guys, Pushers, gangbangers, smugglers, killers. Addiction is a hideous condition, but it's rare. Most of what we hate and fear about drugs, the violence, the overdoses, the criminality, derives from prohibition, not drugs. And there will be no victory in this war either. Even the Drug Enforcement Administration concedes that the drugs it fights are becoming cheaper and more easily available. That's by Dan Baum from Legalize It All, How to Win the War on Drugs for Harper's Magazine. Hi, this is Sarah Russell, your microdose host, here with your weekly tools for transformation and mood boost. And today we'll be talking about the war on drugs. 80s baby here. And in between She-Ra and Jim and the Holograms and the Care Bears, I saw those ominous commercials where they would bring out the raw egg, hold it up and go, this is your brain. And then they would bring out the sizzling black skillet and they would crack the egg into the skillet and the egg would start frying and it would go, this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And little me did not have any questions. I absolutely did not want that to happen. Y'all know I'm a geek. I loved school. Academia was totally my thing. I did not want to fry my brain. I wanted to keep going to school and learning poetry and biology and whatever else it was. I loved it all. I did not want to fry my brain. And so I became one of those people that waited until fairly late in life before I started experimenting. But that's a story for a different time. So last year, June 17th, 2021, marked the 50th anniversary of the day that U.S. President Nixon declared drugs public enemy number one. And according to a report by the Global Commission on Drug Policy, the war on drugs is a complete failure. Quote, arresting and incarcerating tens of millions of these people in recent decades has filled prisons and destroyed lives and families without reducing the availability of illicit drugs or the power of criminal organizations. We have alternatives. We could be emphasizing treatment instead of incarceration or criminalizing people. And countries like Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Portugal have done that, and they've seen positive outcomes. So we know it's possible. And we know that aggressive law enforcement interventions actually make things worse. They increase violence. They increase incarcerations. And those impact disproportionately 
low income and marginalized communities. According to the Sentencing Project, despite there being similar usage rates, 45% of all convicted drug offenders in state prison are black compared to 28% white. And the consequence of a felony conviction from a drug offense is steep. It can affect the jobs you can get. It can affect what kind of housing assistance you can get. And very, very importantly, it impacts your ability to vote, to change these kinds of laws, to come up with another strategy. So serious consequences. And these marginalized and low-income communities, low communities already suffer from a lack of jobs, suffer from lack of safe housing, suffer from a lack of health care. And the war on drugs isn't helping with any of that. It's making it worse. And let's talk about something that many people besides me have talked about, and that's the fact that the war on drugs did not stop the opioid epidemic. So beginning in the late 1990s, drug companies and pharmacy chains started investing heavily in the opioid business. And state regulators, federal regulators, law enforcement agencies, they did not protect communities who were getting flooded with these legally manufacture, manufactured painkillers. And as Sergeant Jonathan Lubecki says in Michael Pollan's Netflix documentary, How to Change Your Mind, quote, I was raised in the 80s and 90s, the D.A.R.E. era, where we had good drugs and bad drugs. Well, good drugs led to an opioid epidemic, epidemic and bad drugs heal PTSD. So I think our definitions of those things need to change. End quote. So if the war on drugs isn't about reducing harm, if it in fact increases harm, then what is it really all about? If it's not about keeping people safe, is this actually about keeping people controlled? Our bodies, our choice? Apparently, not when that empowers us to see the world through a different lens or ease our pain in somewhere or recognize that we can have dignified differences. Part of what some of these substances, like psychedelics, like MDMA, part of what they do is they remind us that we're all connected to each other, that we're all a part of the celestial fabric, that we depend on one another, that we are one another, that we all have the same stardust in our bones. And from the humans we relate with to the plants that we consume to heal us, we are all interconnected in some way. Sometimes we alter ourselves to open ourselves up to new possibilities. Sometimes that's an experience of pleasure or joy or fun. Some that, sometimes that's to open ourselves up to some kind of creativity because we want to dream a new future. And in order to build that new future, we need to open up new pathways that we haven't experienced before. Sometimes we alter ourselves because we aren't liberated yet. And trying to thrive in a world full of oppressive systems is incredibly heartbreaking and heavy. And sometimes we need a way to manage that in some way. Sometimes our bodies are incredible pain and we need to heal in some way. But one thing's for sure, regardless of whether you're using drugs recreationally to heal yourself or to escape the fact that we live within a shit system that isn't helping you out, the war on drugs isn't creating solutions to either our present or our futures. So I have some questions for you. I'm curious, what's your relationship with drugs? What have you done to dismantle any anti-drug propaganda that you were raised with? What stories do you have in your body about drugs? And what stories do you have in your body about people who use drugs? And how many of those stories are true? When was the last time you checked those stories? Where do you go to get valid information about drugs, about what it's actually doing to your brain, what it's actually doing to your body, so that you can engage in harm reduction practices and keep you and your community as safe as possible? Do you have a reliable source for that kind of information? And what kind of future do you want to build, you and your community, and what role do drugs play in that? How can we support each other in our experimentation and our exploration as we each get to choose our own adventure? Thanks for listening. 
If you enjoyed, please leave us a review on Apple Podcast or anywhere else where you listen. We also have a YouTube channel where you can watch the video of this podcast. And I love it when y'all leave me comments. It's fun to be getting into conversations with you all over there. Also go to trendswithbenefits.com to check out all of our written work and also to sign up for our weekly newsletter that has videos, podcasts, articles, new product releases. Um, And also, if you would like me to answer a question on this podcast specifically about your relationships, and that can be with your mom, that can be with your kids, that can be with your lover, coworkers, whatever, whatever relationship. Y'all know I'm a relationship anarchist. We keep this definition fluid. Send a voice memo to podcast at mudwtr.com and I'll answer your question on this podcast. Just if you're curious about something, if you're struggling with something, if there's some support, ask for help. I'm here. I'm here for you and I want to help you. So let me do that if you want it, if you want it. And I am so excited that all of you listeners, my special friends, I get to offer you a discount code for the new Mushroom Boost drop. I don't know if y'all have seen that video. It has a Viking in it. It has a witch in it. It has psychonauts in it. Like, come on, speaking my language, that talks about Mud's new product, the Mushroom Boost. Um, It is a blend of eight different mushrooms. They're all USDA organic, and it supports immunity, vitality, and mental sharpness and you can use the code boost 25 to get 25 percent off your first order of mushroom boost turn on tune in drop out <laughs>